Jason Locke and Fora. How are you, Jason? I'm doing well, brother. How are you? Uh, well, you, obviously, Brockman's got the inside track, right, with Argentina? Yeah, I mean, how, how do you not root for Messi if you truly appreciate greatness? And we just saw Ovechkin shed this label of he's not a winner, his teams don't get it done in the clutch, and can't win on the biggest of big stages. And I'm actually a Maradona guy, so part of me is kind of like, well, I don't know, if Messi never wins one, then maybe Diego will be remembered as fondly as he should be for his on-field exploits. But he's such a great player. I, I would love to see him dominate this tournament and, and you know, get his due um, and, and, you know, have all those knocks erased and put him up there with Maradona and Pele and Price. That said, be your best guess. Who do you think uh, hoists the cup in July, Jason? I, I kind of have a feeling that maybe this is maybe this is Argentina's year. I don't love their back line. It, and it, it could, they, they may have to score four or five to win some of these matches. But, you know, that's not out of the realm of possibility. You can never bet against Germany, especially in a tournament that the proximity is there. Germany playing in Europe is always a safe bet. And I would love to see an African nation, you know, Nigeria, somebody um, really have, have a, a, a great run and, and maybe make it to the semifinals or something like that. Well, I mean, obviously the U S is not in this competition, Jason, nope. but the U S is in a competition for the 2026 world cup uh, with a joint bid with Mexico and Canada, interestingly enough um, uh, with what's going on in the world. Uh, against Morocco, what, <laughs> yeah. what, what are the tea leaves? What are the tea leaves as you're reading it right now when that announcement gets made uh, in Russia tomorrow? I hadn't even thought of that. The president has time to maybe send out a tweet and and wreck all that, right? We hate Canada now. Unbelievable. South Park come to life. Blame yes. Canada. Um, it has to. I, I mean, look, every rational part of my fiber being says it has to happen, but every rational part of my fiber being would have said in '86 when they played it in Mexico when the revolutions were taking place in Colombia, I would have thought that it was going to the U.S. then, and every rational part of my fiber and being would have said there's no way that Qatar with fake clouds and a bubble that doesn't exist and Russia, given what, everything that's happened there with Putin, were going to get a tournament before the U.S., but they got you know boxed out of both of those cycles. So I, until the vote goes down and everything's official, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't bet against it. But I, I think they're really only against Morocco and the way the bids were written and the initial, um, I guess, uh, sort of pedigree that they attached to the bids. The, 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 the U.S., uh, you know, the North American bid was so far advanced from Morocco. But I guess there's still times for tweets and bribes and all that, Rich. So <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope we get it. I mean, it would really, I mean, especially now with, with the state of soccer in this country, I, I think it, it would be huge to have that, that carrot dangled out there and to maybe really kick some people in the backside and, and motivate them to make up for lost time and try to make the most of that tournament. All right, let's talk about the domestic football scene, uh, the uh, the pigskin, the Duke, uh, in the National Football League with the uh, NFL insider from CBS Sports, Jason LaConfora. Taylor Lewand didn't show up today, and uh, John Robinson of the uh, Titans just sent out a release saying that they've been trying to – uh, work on his contract or at least have a conversation with him over the last five, six weeks. Has this been bubbling or and uh, and just came to the surface here, Jason? Uh, yeah, I got I to admit it wasn't one that I was paying too much attention to. But, I mean, uh, honestly, for any of these guys, um, anybody who has outperformed their contract uh, and, and wants to skip and, and mini camp and make the calculated gamble that they'll get that 85K back on the back end, but – that's a good way to sort of rattle some chains and get some people's attention. And, 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 and uh, I mean, I get that Robinson understands that they want to get something done, but I'm, I'm sure that, that he's sitting there looking at Nate Solder saying, well, that guy's 15. What am I? I mean, where, where, where should I be? 18, you know, uh, 17, 20. I mean, I don't know. This off season is going to create a lot of issues for a lot of front offices with, what happened with Cousins and what happened with Watkins, and even at the lower scale where Duncan Moncrief walks in a building with $10 million in his pocket and a chance to make $2 million more if he's just who he's always been, which is like, I don't know, a three-and-a-half or four receiver if he just shows up for work more times than not. I, I don't know, Rich. I mean, David Johnson, not surprised at all. Earl Thomas, not surprised at all. Saw those coming. And I guess, you know, had I looked at – Luan situation more. I would have said, I, I get it there too. Um, the market moves really everywhere other than safety and running back. And, and even that McKinnon contract to a certain degree, I, I think had to get some people's attention at running back. It, you know, things, things went 
in, in an exponential fashion, and the cap's continuing to go up, and who knows what that new CBA is going to look like down the road, so I get it. Yeah, well, with Julio Jones, Odell Beckham, and uh, Le'Veon Bell, which, which guy do you think is most likely to get a new contract before the season begins, Jason? Well, I think Le'Veon Bell's at the, the, the bottom of that list. Um, the other two, I, I don't see how the Giants can play chicken with Odell. Uh, just because he's putting on the brave face now um, or, or, you know, extending olive branches and, and smiling and saying and doing all the right things. And it's one thing to do that now. If he's still set to make $8 million come August and September, I, I don't think we're going to see a whole lot of Odell. And the Giants, I think, have to realize that. I would put him at the top of the list, which, which I guess means Julio goes in the middle. I don't, I don't know that Julio's going to get – like Odell Beckham, that's a complete – that's a new contract. You know what I mean? That's – at least two full new years and, and maybe three added on to what he's supposed to make this year, however they want to skin that cat. I, I think Julio may be more of a sweeten the pot, add some incentive, give him, you know, maybe throw a, a few million more at him now. But I, I don't think he's in this, quite the same boat those other two are in. Certainly not Odell, who's still on his rookie contract. I know. Do we talking $20 million for him? Is that what we're talking about per year? I don't know how you get around that. I, I don't know how you get around that because it's there for him, and he knows that. And so he's sitting there with his agent, and they're looking at the, the landscape, and they're saying, Sammy Watkins, maybe one year in Sammy Watkins' career, he was even the best, most productive receiver on his own team, much less the league. And he gets, you know, $45 million guaranteed, and he's at 17. How am I, how am I not at 20? I, I mean, it's, it's <laughs> I, 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 because a 32 team league, you're not going to tell me that he's on the open market. There isn't one that would do it, and it only takes one. And frankly, I think there's more than one. I mean, Landry, I mean, he's a like, nice player and everything. $16 million for a slot guy who averages nine yards per catch and doesn't get in the end zone that much. Well, so, it, yeah, I think I think 20 is a legit number. A few more minutes left with Jason Lock and Foro. While we've had this conversation, a uh, video of a white whale was just posted, correct, on Twitter? Chris Brockman? Uh, correct, by the Indianapolis Colts. And what does that video say? Uh, Andrew show? Luck throwing a football. Look at that, Jason, while we're chatting. Maybe that's what they were waiting for, was for us to talk. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Um, what do you think? Yeah, look, look it's, it's a long road to hoe here, and that's awesome. And um, it obviously has to start somewhere, and it starts with, with him throwing down, you know, throwing around the Duke. I'm assuming I, – I'm, I'm not looking at my Twitter right now. I'm assuming he's throwing a regulation football. I don't know if it's it – does you know. It does not look like a nerf or a peewee okay. at all. Okay. That, that does look like the genuine article. Right. right, it's not a slinky or anything. Well, not a, no, no, no. That, that, I mean, it, it's a nice spiral. He's moving his okay. feet around. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, obviously the expectation for, for any football fan, anybody who appreciates the game, is, is that he gets back playing and then can get back to, to where he left off before he kind of started becoming damaged goods. But it is a long process. And, and last year, unfortunately, he didn't get very far down it. Right? I, mean, he, he never, I don't believe he ever got to a point where he was throwing consecutive games. I mean, sorry, consecutive days much less anybody talking about a game, you know, much less him even throwing the full route tree. So they've got to continue to take baby steps as they will, but you hope with that additional treatment and the additional time off and the healing that it's smooth sailing here. But it's it's going to be a, a long checklist with a lot of sort of baby steps along the way. Um, and, and hopefully there's no swelling inflammation or anything that, that you know, sets him off the wrong, from the wrong path. But even right now, I mean, it's almost the middle of June, you know? I mean, no, training I camps are going to be here before you know it. And even this, I would I would have to say, is suboptimal. You would have loved for this day to have been in March. That said, it is what it is, as the coaches say, yeah. and at least it's 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 something rather than nothing. Last one for you, Josh Allen working with the ones a little bit in the first day of this mini camp, and then he'll be back to the threes, according to the Bills. Yeah. H- handicap for me, the week one rookie class, do you think, that we're going to see out there? I don't know that any of them play week one, Rich. Wow. I, I, that would be an upset, Jason. That would be I, a rarity, I, too. I think I would bet against it, barring injury. I would bet against it. I saw the Bills, albeit I just parachuted in for a day last week, and Josh Allen was with the threes. And you, you see the speed and the legs and the arm talent, but there was a lot of balls on the ground, a lot of balls thrown too low. And, you know, I think they'll, they'll take their time with him a little bit because they know once they turn it over to him, there's, there's really no going back. There's not going to be a yo-yo. I think he plays in the first half of the season. I think he may play. It could be like Trubisky where he plays in October. I, I don't know that he plays week one. I, I would think he'd have the best 
odds of doing that, and now Bradford's arm could fall off in, in August. Yeah. And, you know, or his knee or whatever. He's the bionic man. He's held together with super glue and duct tape. So, you know, maybe that's Rosen. But if you put a gun in my head right now, I, I, I think I would, I would certainly bet the under. And I don't know that any of them play week one I or think, start week one. I Lamar think, Jackson, I think could be Lamar Jackson's the first one on the field because – down distance situation puts him on in the goal line situation and nobody else starts. That would be, I guess, somewhat ironic, but I wouldn't be stunned if he actually gets on the field first. Well, he's got to get on the field, Jason. I mean, we've he's had this conversation. He, 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 for for yeah. a, 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 a yards. on that team. He's a the yards, best on most teams. Right. A yards and points challenged offense that lacked dynamism in so many different ways last year. He has to get on the field, and the question is: is if he's a, the quarterback or a quarterback, how do they square the circle by putting him behind Flacco at all, or splitting Flacco out wide? I mean, no, I don't know I don't how think they're going to work do this. That, Rich, I, I, I think that look, Flacco will come off the field, and this guy will go in, and he will run RPOs, and he will run, you know, things. It's not going to be a completely different offense or anything like that, or it's not going to be gimmicks and gadgets he's going to run stuff that Alex Smith ran last year and and Trubisky ran last year and and that and that Marty Morning when had Michael Vick doing you know seven eight years ago or whatever it was I would look at it in those terms and he's coming in to be the quarterback and Flacco's going to stand on the sidelines for a few plays and when you average 5.7 yards per attempt which will probably be three yards below what Lamar Jackson averages per carry this year then that's what happens Jason appreciate the time Enjoy the World Cup, and we'll chat down the line throughout the summer. Sounds good, buddy. You do the same. You got it. Jason Lockin' 4 at Jason Lockin' 4. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.